so far I think a lot of us have kind of gotten some level of respite some level of um, relief with the news of the vaccine coming out but I guess for myself and people like myself who are fans of the nightlife I'm still a little bit dubious as to whether or not this is actually going to mean a reopening of our sector as in hospitality as in nightlife I don't think it's coming back man until like 2022 because I haven't seen no news like when that vaccine got announced I just kind of assumed there'd be like a flurry of places popping up announcing or confirming their lineups right and saying hey by the way we're gonna have this is going on that is going on this is going on right i've not really seen anything i've seen the the kind of regular ones which are kind of backed by big money right the sort of like commercial festivals they've said something but they can afford to keep on delaying and delaying more so as you're like kind of more culturally relevant independent looking festivals right or even nightclubs um they they don't really they can't really afford to put out any half-baked announcements they have to wait until it's perfectly perfectly sure before they can do anything and i've not really heard anything um i've seen because uh, i remember watching this podcast called DJs and Beers. It's on YouTube as well. Check it out. It's on Chris Liebling's channel. It's really good. And they were talking about um what people within their sort of like bracket of DJs are doing, right? And this is Chris Liebling, Radio Slave, Drum Code, you know, some really stellar DJs who get to, to talk like every week about, you know, everything concerning dance, music, and nightlife culture. And they were saying on their show that a lot of their people, a lot of their friends, or a lot of people in their kind of peer group are now starting to go and do shows in like places where there's no real rules in it, like Mexico florida parts of south america like colombia and other places like that seems to be the new place you remember in the beginning of the pandemic everyone was going to like egypt and tunisia right and parts of southern italy now because obviously those parts are starting to close up they're just trying they're basically following the nightlife wherever it leads them where it's kind of open um where the markets are sort of open more so than they are maybe in the western side of europe so um that's been the only thing i've heard so far um, i don't know because i've they even spoke about plague graves i've not seen much footage of plague graves now but i'm not sure if that's a consequence of um instagram decision to take away the ability to like go and location you could do location searching via instagram stories I'm not sure if you guys know about that, but there's this feature on Instagram before where, you know, when you search for a location, you'd search for a location, like I don't know, a, a restaurant or wherever it may be. And then you could obviously see what people have uploaded based on the location that they're at, like a geotagging thing. And you could search by the most popular images and also most recent. So you could get an idea of what people were doing when they were there. It's great to sort of like spy and stalk location from afar. And there's also the feature where you could click on the little picture that comes up and that would take you to all the stories people are uploading um, um, tagging that place or using that hashtag wherever it may be and Instagram have taken that away I'm not sure when they did it but from what I've researched online it appears that it might have something to do with the US elections they didn't want to be accused of I don't know somehow manipulating the results I don't know what it may be but something to do with voting and the elections in the US so Instagram took away that feature and the idea is that they were going to reinstate it as soon as the elections were over but I guess the fact that Trump is still um deciding not to concede that might have led to their decision not to kind of turn that feature back on but I don't know how that could be any way related right there's definitely must have been just a decision for instagram on their side just to be like hey we're taking away this feature point blank which is a shame because that was the way that was i think the main way how most people were basically finding out these playgrounds are happening because you could in real time check people tagging themselves at a certain location and then see what was going on even if the dj didn't upload the images so that is maybe allowing a lot of djs to sort of like do play graves without being kind of called out because there's not really been a, a surge of that stuff happening and you'd imagine especially now with the colder seasons in most of the kind of you know western europe and you know things opening up in other places that there'd be a lot more footage out there but it doesn't seem to be that much of it but again i'm not thinking that it's not happening because i'm sure it is you know i've always been a firm believer that there are people just living a completely different um experience just you know, this whole covid idea is like, oh we're going through this together collectively no we're not you just see how some celebrities are moving and how some politicians are moving you know they say one thing and they do the other thing some people just living completely different you know they're just not even um trying to abide by the rules so i'm sure the ones that are really committed to the party lifestyle are like you know what i don't care i'm gonna do what i'm gonna do and i'm gonna just keep it moving so i'm sure that must be a, a, a um a situation out there but again we don't really see these things in it going forward but i don't know man, i was just thinking about say thinking when am i really gonna see the inside of a nightclub again like 
on in its truest sense of the word i know i could probably go to one now and go to some sort of sit down affair where i'm sit, i'm seated in this you know sectioned off little cubicle with my table of six mates or six strangers i know i could do that but who wants to go to a nightclub and experience it you know in that in that fashion i wouldn't want to do that personally i want to go and experience it the way i experienced it last year 2019 um and if I can't do that until 2022, then so be it. But I don't know. I just assume because of the vaccine, it would be a lot more encouraging news out there. People talking about, you know, um, things reopening and, you know, lineups being announced and stuff. But it's been nothing. It's been completely dead, like dead. No news whatsoever. Um, so that's very, very concerning for us nightlife aficionados. But again, maybe I shouldn't be surprised, isn't it? This this pandemic has not, not been, um, it's not been a cinch. And it hasn't really, we haven't really done our best we haven't really put our best foot forward like if there was if there were karmic points allocated to how your country responded to COVID-19 the UK would be very very low down the totem pole in it like we don't really deserve to have things reopening I know it's not how life works but if in terms of like the effort put in by the population um the plan put in place by the government right there hasn't really been you can't really say with your chest that we deserve anything right of any sort of you know positive positivity when it comes to covid maybe apart from if you're living up north right anyone outside of london has been treated you know with up to utter contempt by a government but for the most part no one can really say with their chest hey we deserve to have these things open and that thing open unless again you're a business owner unless you live outside of london then you definitely deserve the right to earn a living right and to be able to pay your way without having asking for government handouts that's a bit annoying thing about it most people that i've heard speak um small business owners wherever they are in whatever sector most of them have said, hey, I would, I'm would, i happy with foregoing the grants. They're like, you know what? Miss me with the grants. You keep the grants. Just let me open my business at some capacity, right? Whether it's 30%, 20%, whatever. Allow me to uh, basically be able to decide my own future. Let, them my fu let my future be in my own hands as opposed to just leaving up to the gods. And, you know, um, depending on when your money runs out is when you suddenly um, go go out of business that isn't any way to sort of reward people who in for the most part i would say those people are the ones that are really uphold i, I don't know how it works out in terms of numbers but i would assume if you're a small business owner you are in part you're playing a large part in terms of up, uplifting our economy right you take the risk to even start a business which is already crazy as it is right taking your money wherever money that it is family loans whatever to put it on the line to try and make money in order to pay your bills is a really risky occupation more so than just getting a normal job so it should be rewarded in some way shape or form right they should be given some sort of um incentive to keep that business going because you're going to need those places when that does get back to normal which you eventually will but um it's been a very very odd experience that way but again i, I guess it's just um with pandemic it seems like you you you're, you get to different varying levels of accepting your situation and i guess maybe i'm kind of at i'm approaching the end of it right the end of my cycle in terms of like going through t times of um denial right grief loss all this sort of stuff right maybe i'm i'm i'm, I'm heading towards the last few stages because i'm so i think the nightclub thing was one that keep us hold on we just announced a vaccine right the first like vaccine approved in western europe you know I, I, I know russia announced something but you know we don't really know what they're really saying about that one that they announced but the first vaccine approved in western europe everyone's got really good things to say about it every expert that i've kind of looked at in terms of what they've been saying has been like encouraging but there's been no real pickup in terms of like okay cool this venue announced this date this lineup is announced there this thing's going on here this is moving over there like nothing it's been completely quiet which leads me to believe that you know it might be another year until we get that stuff back and then again that guy from vulture man you remember that guy from back in the day in vulture like i keep mentioning this flipping article all the time because i'm an absolute loser but let me get up on here again there was a guy on vulture who said ages ago this is this must have been I, I'm, a, I'm gonna say june july he must have said this right he was saying oh don't expect any live events right to happen in um any meaningful way until um what was it did he say next year no until 2022 he said absolutely mad lad and he's been proved right for the most part if you think about how things are panning out it, even with a vaccine in mind it still haven't had any real encouraging news so let me see where it was i've got it here i just recently shared it with that um michaeli guy who I was uh, commenting on something about. Where is it? Du, 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 du. Oh. 
too many here at the same time come on load there we go found it so this is a tweet let me quickly read this out and then we can move on to some actual real topics or well, everything's real here but you know just continue on with some other topics so this was um what was this this was in yeah, variety uh magazine this was published in july 17th right or 2020 and this guy called Mark Geiger, who is a top touring executive, said, don't expect any concerts to be back by 2022. And unfortunately, it looks like he might be right. So this was an article here from Vulture. It says, um, Mark Geiger, let me get the image up here before. It should, let me load because it's getting a bit slow because I've probably got too many windows open at the moment. So please bear with me. But, but, but is it going to open? 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 Okay, let's go. So Mark Geiger until recently head of music at WME, one of the founders of Lollapalooza, sounds like he's not expecting to be attending any festivals in 2020, in 2021. Asked by Bob Lefet's podcast when he expects concerts to return, Geiger said, my guess is late 21 or more likely 2022. He told Lefetz that the problem of insurance going forward is a biggie. When it comes to the when it comes to reasons, sorry, when it comes to reasons for it, a long delay, although there are probably 20, he said. Look, the whole thing is a shit show. Whether it's testing or it's the government, it's too infinite. It's too infinite to of a world to go down. But in my humble opinion, it's going to be 2022. It's going to take a long time before what I call the germophobia economy to be slowly killed off and be replaced by what I call the claustrophobia economy, which is where everybody wants to go out and go back to dinner and have their life and go to festivals and go to shows. And my instinct is that this is going to take a while because as you can see, there are super spreader events, sports, shows, festivals, anything, the classroom, um, anything going to do well while the virus is going is its presence. So it is is this person yeah cool so my instinct is the world as has a very long forced time out geiger said a lot of people see this in positives in this whether it's climate whether it's pollution whether it's traffic and whether it's nature whether it's animals whether it's our own beings and taking a pause and i know it's frustrating maddening and economically destructive but ah this is bigger than us and if you study history things like this have happened in history and have been super disruptive to normal society so here's a biggie so here's a biggie for our lifetime Jesus Christ. And he continues here. When left the industry blogger and podcaster brought up the question of insurance, Geiger indicated having policies available for the future is a long way off for, for most promoters. He said, there is no insurance against COVID currently offered. And even normal insurance policies are pretty scarce and hard to come by. The insurers are sitting on their sidelines because there's infinite, there's infinite in liability. Hey, I got COVID, this and that. How do you prove it, etc.? I think the biggest companies can make self-insure can maybe self-insure and they can start everyone else has to wait until the insurance industry feels good so that's one of many many roadblocks in the way of restarting this vibrant economy that got shut down so there's probably 20 reasons insurance is the biggie and i don't know where that comes back either so i guess he was right in the end he was basically proved right and i think at the time i was thinking this is i think i even mentioned when i tweeted to back to him that i mean kylie guy that i was under the assumption you know best possible scenario was that would be back to normal and i wouldn't mean normal i mean whatever you were doing this time last year um i'd say the earliest summer of next year right summer 22 i thought okay stuff will start to feel normal by then but considering how shit the response has been to covid in general in the uk and parts of europe and considering that the response to the vaccine has been great but also not as encouraging as I'd hope, because I'd imagine, you know, you don't even have to vaccinate the people who are at risk, but then that's still regard, that still require people to still abide by some of the, you know, distancing and all those rules in the meantime, to spread the, the, the to stop the spread of the virus in the meantime, all these little things are in the way. And then of course, the things in place just in general that I'm not even aware of, right? Um, well, in terms of actually operating a venue, operating an, an event um, that are going to be affected by this complete, you know, pause in life moving around for a best part of two years it's definitely going to have some after effects it's not like you just turn it back on and it, it, it definitely does go back to my rubbish analogy that i made ages ago about um it feeling like a house party where the police come and close the event or the police come and tell you to lower the music and then you lower the no the police tell you to finish the house party and you lower the music hope the the police go away and don't come back you turn it back on again but the party is never the same right because the police is coming as always it's affected some 
something, it's kind of left a bit of an after effect. And no matter how much you try and get it going again, you try and get people started, you get a DJ on the decks, it never really goes back to how it was prior. And I always imagined the lockdown would be the same for the entertainment industry. It would be a necessary moment for some government, especially in the UK with the Tory government. It feels like, you know, they're opposed to any kind of fun activities that don't include shopping, right? But um, they would use this as a, as a good opportunity to maybe, you know, bleed that that industry dry or not industry dry basically um what's it what they call it when you kind of you add um uh to sort of flush them out right that's what you it feels like they're trying to do at the moment they don't like a certain segment of our nighttime economy because you know they don't mind restaurants and shopping and stuff but when it comes to nightclubs and bars the tory government seems to have a bit of a bug to bear with those with that industry i'm not too sure what it's about but regardless this would be a perfect opportunity again if you were acting in their interest to be like hey let's squeeze these guys a little bit let's leave them out in the lurch for a prolonged period of time without giving them any possibility to reopen under any sort of safe um you know covid secure way and let's let just let nature happen and run its course and then you know by you know by just uh you know removal of time people are definitely going to fall by the wayside and you've definitely seen it you see many many places you know decide to just not open at all because there's no point and just completely you know cease to exist so you can just imagine what's, what, what another year is going to do let alone another six months so it's not looking good it's not looking good but you know again what can you do man i guess the writing should have been on the wall a long time ago for most of us but it, it is what it is it is